Welcome to Social Genius, brought to you by Drunk on Social, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. YouTube now is including links on their shorts to the long form videos, which is going to just increase and enhance the possibility of monetizing. Elon and Zuck are still talking about fighting. And if you run a Facebook group and you're not active as an admin, you might get booted. These are what we're going to talk about today on episode 125 of the Social Genius Podcast. Tristan, hi, buddy. What's up, man? How was your weekend? Uh, well, I was at Disney, and uh, I thought about you a lot because- Wait, uh, I didn't know you were at Disney yeah. this whole time. I had I thought you went to the lake. No, 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 no. I was speaking in Orlando last week, last Friday, so at the time of this recording, and then my family flew, flew in Friday night, and we went to uh, Magic Kingdom on Saturday and uh, Hollywood Studios on yesterday. And I was at the, you know, I went and checked out all the Star Wars stuff, which, you know, was, was pretty cool. That's cool, dude. That's very cool. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Well, dude, I'm excited about YouTube. Can I, can I say one thing too before yeah. we even get started? Just by the way, I, and I posted about this, but the best, probably the best roller coaster ride I've ever been on, uh, and I've been on a lot, was, uh, I, it was Tron at the Magic Kingdom. Have you heard about it? Yes. Dude, like, it's you like riding it? a motorcycle on a roller coaster. When I saw it, I was like, no way. How are they even doing that? Like, how are you not going to fall off? It was, <laughs> that was fascinating engineering in and of itself, but the roller coaster itself was so freaking cool, man. It was That's it was cool. cool. It was a lot of fun. I need to go on that one. I keep on seeing it. Mm -hmm. Totally. The, one, the ride that I like is... I don't remember what it's called, but it's a Star Wars ride, obviously. It's the one where you you actually get off of uh, one part of the ride, walk to the next part, you're like part of the whole scene, and then you jump into the next part. That's Rise uh, of the Resistance, I think. That's the one. Did you go on it? No, because the lines are too long. I did the Millennium Falcon one, which was cool. So we get to drive, like, fly the Millennium Falcon, which is neat. And then we did another one that was a virtual one. Uh, but Rise of the Resistance I did not do, which now I need to go back. Well, I'm leaving right now. I'm going to Disney. See you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's record those first. Let's that record. All right, YouTube. I'm excited about this because I have some shorts that have gotten a few thousand views recently. And and I can easily put a link now so that people can watch the longer version of that short. Because a lot of the shorts that I do are cut up from these longer ones. And the thing that YouTube has seen be a challenge for TikTok over the last few months is the monetization on short videos. And this is why on TikTok, dude, you, you see that they're trying to solve the problem by allowing the creators to put in links to shop so they can make some money. And you see now a lot of these creators have shop links. Well, YouTube's like, wait a second, why don't we just put a link to the longer form video where we can monetize your long form video a lot easier than the short one. And so... That allows us to be like, hey, you know what, dude? Yeah, I'll put up a, a lot of links to my. If you like this short video, well, watch my longer one. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think that that's the that's the ultimate solution for these short video monetization, but I think it's a good direction, and I like it. So let me ask you because I, so I'm looking through, as you know, I just recently expanded my TikTok channel to YouTube, and we're posting a short a day, and and so we're only doing one long form a week. And so as I'm looking through my shorts, which I don't go in here that often enough, but I'm now realizing I've got 2,300, 6,400, 2,800, 3,000, 5,500, 8,400. I mean, I'm getting some really good viewership on my shorts, but they don't specifically lead to a, like the short isn't a short version of a long. So is it just going to guide them to my latest long or how is that going to work? Well, whatever you want, man. That's where you have to come in and say, hey, if you want to watch more of this, dive in here, right? And so I, when I'm posting, so when I'm posting, am I clicking on something? Is that is that what's... Well, when you're posting up a YouTube short, yep. now you'll be able to say, watch the longer version or want more of this, watch the longer version of this. And that's in like the that's in like the settings piece when you're going through and yeah. the keywords and stuff? You got to be, because in a short, 
you're only I think you're only allowed to put up to a hundred characters, which is, which isn't very much, right? Mm -hmm. So now you'll be able to put up a link there as well, which will be awesome because they have they haven't allowed that. And while we're on that topic, now YouTube is also allowed very similarly to what Instagram did. Remember it allowed you to do five links? Remember that recently? Uh, yeah, the the uh, website links, yeah. Website links. So YouTube just launched that as well. You can add up to 14 links. Oh. So that's that's a lot. So it's kind of like, hey, you know what? Uh, that's on your main profile when you add links. So you can have them go anywhere you want. Oh. Do you have so to have a certain number of subscribers or something? Or um, Dude, all I know is it's for creators. So it could simply be when you hit a thousand followers or when you change your profile? That's a great question. Well, I'm noticing, so I didn't set my page up. I had, you know, a VA set it up for me and I've got a couple of people working on this and I do have four links, you know, so basically it links to, and it's probably just, they just probably link to what is logical, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, a page and a group. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay. I'm checking like it right. Yeah, I see the links. You can see them. I have six links. Um, all right, dude. Yeah. So watch out for YouTube, man. I like it. I, I think, I, I still think YouTube's the best place to go. And then Facebook. But you got something on Facebook. What do you got? Yeah, well, gosh, now here I am just uh, sitting here staring at uh, my YouTube. I'm glad we did this. Uh, I need to do that more often. So this is interesting. Uh, the headline is uh, uh, your social media today, Meta warns group admins to maintain acti activity or they'll be replaced. And so... As I was reading through it, it basically said that, of course, the AI within the platform is paying attention. And if there's very little activity or no activity from an admin in their Facebook group, Facebook is now going to send you a notice saying, hey, we've noticed you're not active here. Do you want us to assign a new admin? Or if they notice there are no admins in your groups, they're going to suggest admins based on activity of your group members. I thought this was interesting, you know, for two reasons. One, I think there's a lot of people that have started groups and done nothing with them. And so this is your kick in the ass to get active with them. You're talking to the godfather of, of real estate Facebook groups right here. I'm talking to him. You're listening to him. Uh, and two, uh, just as a reminder that, you know, Facebook groups are still the most powerful tool as it relates to creating a community online that exists. And if you're not doing it, man, it should move to very high on your list of things to do. Uh, as it relates to social media in the near future. I, I like that, man. It's the first time I'm hearing about it, and here's why I like it, because it's going to force the admins to participate in the groups that they want to keep alive, which means that we're going to start seeing even more activity, right? Which, which also indicates like, hey, Facebook had an actual growth in the last two quarters, like back-to-back -back quarters, the amount of monthly active users. So now they're saying, hey, why, why don't we focus more on our active users and say, how can we bring them in? If one-fifth of the activity that happens on Facebook is in groups, dude, this is wonderful. This means that more people will be in groups. I love this. Yeah. Obviously, I love it, right? We've got what? drunk on social. It's the yeah. community. Yeah, of course. Yep. Right? This is massive. 11,000 people, dude. Yep. We need to be on there more. Yeah, it's and you know it's it's uh, you know I want to I want to reiterate and I kind of want to get your opinion on this and and obviously I think obviously I'm I'm living proof of it now too because number one you don't have to start a group for the group to have an impact on your career that's me Tristan started it I infiltrated it but figuring out how to infiltrate it without being a douchebag is very important uh, that's that's whether it's business related community related whatever because as Tristan can attest he's kicked out probably hundreds, maybe close to over a thousand people because there's just, you know, we have an abundance of douchebags on social media. Um, so that's important to know. But also like when it comes to creating a group, like you can do what I did. Like you find something that works on another platform like TikTok for me and now multiply your efforts into a Facebook group and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And and I mean, dude, community, uh, using it as a CRM, you know, for your, for your, sphere of influence there's so many uses what's another idea that you've seen work really well for a group by now you certainly know that instagram is a social media platform that is arguably the most important platform to establish your brand and business as we head into the future understanding the growing of following is simply what the world tells you is important 
but in actuality is purely vanity with very little results. And that's why we have come to really appreciate and endorse Michelle Berman with the Instagram Power Method, who teaches you how to actually connect with ideal clients and attract them to you without having to sell. Michelle comes from a place of practicing what she preaches, as she has built her business 100% through organic Instagram leads. Everything is rooted in sales psychology and conversation based on tapping into the brains of your ideal client. Vanity metrics are for, well, vanity. Go connect with Michelle today. Check out PowerMethodMasterclass.com. That's PowerMethodMasterclass.com and be prepared to change your business's life. Listen, when it comes to groups, I think we should start with our passion or start with something that we love. Like for you, I would say you're very close to probably going all in on an Ozarks group, right? I already am. It's already there. So I would say as that starts growing, that'd be an amazing thing to do. And so people listening in, if people love to garden or they love to kayak or they love pickleball or, or they're focused in a specific area for real estate or for that business. I think that there's so much, man, there's no limit to where we can, what we can do. As long as you start with something that you love, that you're going to show up with consistently. That is the key. Yep. I love that. I right. Love it. All right. And you've got one final topic. What is it? I do actually. And I've got a bonus. I got a bonus tip that I'm going to be executing. I'm going to, I'm going to run it by you at the end here. Uh, but the, but the next one's kind of a, a, a I don't know if it's a joke or not, uh, but what's important about it is is what Elon uses to obviously grow X and keep Twitter relevant, which the headline is, you know, on Elon versus Musk and Elon's use of controversy to maximize media attention. And they're talking about the old Elon Zuck fight. And I don't go on X very often, but I noticed there was some recent posts, one of Elon having a training session with a couple of X. UFC fighters. Uh, and then guess who responded with his own picture and who's pretty freaking ripped, which is Zuck. Uh, yeah. He also is training with some UFC fighters. And Tristan, my personal opinion of this whole topic is that it's a complete and utter joke. Uh, I think purely for media attention. However, Zuck looks great. Uh, so I applaud him for that. And I think actually this is kind of the Elon's you know, kind of trigger to maybe get into shape because he he's not <laughs> comparably. Uh, but I don't know. I, what do you think about all this? You know, I love it. I think I think they're a great example of using social media and in the current world that we're in. They're not afraid. They're not afraid of what people are going to say. They're they don't actually don't give a shit. Both of them, and they're saying, "Hey, if you're going to go all in, number one, have thick skin." Number two, have fun. Like, if I can't laugh at myself, you don't think Elon laughs at himself daily? <laughs> dude, dude, come on, that guy. Uh, and the fact that they're going to fight, if they actually do fight, it'll be epic, right? But look at all of the media it's creating. And I think I think that we can all learn a lesson from that, good and bad, right? But pick the good. I like to focus on the good and say, hey, Interesting. Let's let's break down what they're doing. And you know what? Jeff, you and I could totally do that if we pick on other influencers and say, hey, I bet you we can collab because th that's in essence what they're doing. They're collabing. Yeah, it's a great idea. I And you know what's even funnier that just to, and I'll put that put this piece of it to rest before I kind of take it and, and we'll articulate it to what people can do. But he actually Elon even says here that uh, he suggests that they fight, uh, that, that this is hosted at the Colosseum in Rome, and that he has talked to the Prime Minister of Italy. <laughs> oh, shoot, dude. This, this is great. And everyone, everyone's denied everything. So the Prime Minister of Italy is denied, and uh, uh, Zuckerberg is denied that this is actually going to happen. And then Elon followed it up by calling him a chicken. <laughs> I mean, dude. He's taking it to another level. But the, I think the point here is that for some of you who struggle to gain traction, like, again, 
I don't know that being controversial, like around politics or religion or, or you know race or anything that's truly pulverizing or polarizing is a good idea. But when you take my examples, Tristan, where it's like I did, you know, I do a channel on the Lake of the Ozarks. I talk about boating rules and I'm a novice compared to a captain. Right. Or I take the local news and I just give my opinion. Anytime you give your opinion on anything, you're going to get, you know, probably 50, 60, 70 percent back you and 30 to 60 percent that crucify you. All Someone will always disagree with you. And frankly, I'm leaning into it, dude. Like I'm now realizing I've got to be doing these things once or twice a week on at minimum just to keep my audience polarized. They love it and they're proving it. And so it's like, I think some of you need to lean into that a little bit more. Yeah, I think I think you've got to create that tension. As long as that tension, it, it goes along with your values and what you believe. And I think you do that very well because if you say something and you actually believe it, it's a lot easier to back it, back it up and be like, yep, you know what? I actually do believe it, guys. This is what it looks like. Yeah. So I, I think you do it very well, man. And I think a lot of people are scared of pushing the tension buttons, but we need to push those a little bit more. Yeah. Well, and I think the last thing I will say on that too is that, and I think people are afraid of this. So when it comes to like, let's just say in my idea for any real estate agent, for example, would be that you take local news or let local subject matter that's in the media and you talk about it and you give your opinion. I think people are afraid of of splitting the difference and they're afraid that they're going to piss off 50 percent like like when i said you shouldn't be driving faster than 10 miles an hour at night on a lake and a lot of people are like you're an idiot you can go up to 30 <laughs> miles a block. but th yes i get the rules but i've driven on a lake at night in pitch black i'm telling you it's freak it freaks me out and that's why what you said like i back up what i say yeah maybe i'm a big pansy for driving so slow but i'd rather be safe than sorry and i'm okay with that right um, and I think that if you're going to do this in your community, here's the problem. Most of you will never gain any traction because you won't you won't say anything because you don't want to piss anyone off. And the people that actually succeed, and you and I have some friends that do this very well in real estate, and they piss a lot of people off, but they attract the people that love them. And I would argue that there is something to it. And so I know on many of you, this is going to freak you, freak you all the way out. Uh, but for those of you looking for an edge, this is it. That's that's a place that you can go. And yes, you're going to divide your audience. But so what? Now you've got 50% raving fans. Rather than 100% of nothingness, now you got something. Dude, that's a great point because I, I actually follow a couple people in a few people, not just a couple, a few people that I completely disagree with when it comes to the real estate market. Yeah. Because I like to just, <laughs> I like to just argue. I'm yeah. like, are you crazy? Yeah. So, and plus, you know, most people in our world agree that in real estate, at least, we have a, a, a deficit of the amount of properties out there because people are holding on to them because nobody wants to get a 6%, 7% rate, right? So uh, anyway, that's a whole different story. I do that on purpose. I love that you said that because- Yeah, yeah Dave, Dave Ramsey, dude. Dave Ramsey, that's, that's- I follow Dave Ramsey and I don't agree with like 80% of what he says. Yeah. Such a great point, dude. Yeah. What a great way to duet them or collab them or remix them. Yes. yes. Great job, dude. Great job. Well, that's all I got, man. What do you got? I, I got one last thing that I'm going to do that I want to give this tip for those of you that stuck around for this. And I don't know if you've done this. This may not be anything new, but I am. I actually wrote some scripts uh, because it just dawned on me the other day. I was like, because uh, my VA was like, hey, you need to invite more people to grow our Facebook group for the Lake of the Ozarks. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that yet. And here's why. I want to create a pinned video. I'm going to put it at the top and it's going to, and it's going to, it's going to have the, uh, uh, like a cover or a, um, a thumbnail that says what you can expect if you follow me. And I'm going to do this for my Instagram page. I'm going to do it for my Facebook groups. I'm going to do it for everything. Like, what you can expect if you follow me, that'll be the, that'll be the thumbnail. So like, as soon as somebody goes to my Instagram, or they go to my TikTok, they're going to see the first pinned video. And I think more people should do that. You've got a greater likelihood of grabbing people in because now they know exactly what to watch and why to watch it. That actually goes back to how YouTube designed their profile channel, which is at the very top. You remember now, you're nodding your head. Yeah. It's a, hey, this is who we are. Yeah. Very, very interesting. I like the idea of 
pinned one pin video explaining what you do, who yeah. you are. Yeah. I love it, dude. That's a really good idea. I have not done that on TikTok. I usually pin the one that got the most views or one that I like. Which is me, me too. Me too. But now it's like, you know what? Because I'm always teaching people like, how do you hook people in to follow you, to go down your rabbit hole? It starts with your bio, right? We talk about this all the time. And so it's like, why not just cut to the chase, man? You came here. Now, this is what I'm all about. Watch this. And uh, yeah, why not? I'm going to try it. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Like it. And that's a wrap. Episode 125 in the books. See you, buddy. See ya. Thanks for listening to Social Genius, brought to you by Drunk on Social. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated.